shunned by the West, isolated in Gaza and seemingly unable to uphold freedom of speech, Hamas is being reduced to running the state through intimidation. But Hamas has one ace to play to unite the Palestinian people behind its embryonic government, in the form of the specter of the great enemy, Israel. The desire to reclaim land from Israel has always galvanized support for Hamas amongst Palestinians. Abu Umar, a Hamas military commander, epitomizes this burning desire. This place is not really where I belong or where my ancestors come from. My father was kicked out of his home three kilometers across the border behind us. So when I was old enough to understand, inevitably, my feelings were awoken. Then I realized I had a just cause, and I must fight for this cause. In 1948, when Israel declared independence, it triggered a war with its Arab neighbors that displaced 700,000 Palestinians from their homes. Hamas has always advocated the repossession of that Palestinian land through armed resistance. The international view of Hamas as uncompromising extremists is typified by one of the old guard. According to Islam, we have a duty to reconquer any land taken from our people by force. Nobody is allowed to give up any part of it, not the president or all the presidents, not a king or all kings, not a prince or all the princes. No Palestinian faction can give up even a handful of land until Judgment Day. So today, when the American president calls a peace summit, it's Fatah's leader, Mahmoud Abbas, who's invited as sole representative of the Palestinians, because Fatah, unlike Hamas, accept Israel's right to exist. Fatah seems to be very much hand in hand with Israel and the West right now in terms of, of policy and, and negotiations. So I think um, part of this depends really on how Israel and the West plays this game. If, it's, if it gives Fatah breadcrumbs, um, Hamas will gain from this. And I think this has been a mistake of the international community to have this kind of blanket ban on Hamas, where it's failed to see that there are pragmatic leaders within Hamas um, that could be engaged with. One of those leaders shunned by the West is Khaled Michal. Targeted for assassination by the Israelis, he claims Hamas is ready to enter into dialogue with all parties. It's the United States and some of the quartet who veto dialogue with the legitimate Palestinian government, of which Hamas is an essential part. We are open to all. We are prepared to talk to anyone. We are not outside the Palestinian arena. We are an essential part of it. We have legitimacy because of the elections and the legitimacy of our struggle. Hamas have their own unique plan for peace with Israel that no one as yet is listening to or taking seriously. A truce means the end of war, so the region can enjoy security, stability, and tranquility for 10 years. It could be extended to 30 or 50 years, or for as long as agreed. Hamas needs to be clearer in terms of what this ceasefire entails and how it will um, how it will come about. At the moment, it's really uh, spoken in terms of generalizations. I think if it, if it came with, with, with a more detailed proposal, then people could sit down and say, well, okay, let's, let's read this, let's look at the bits we like, look at the bits we don't like, and maybe it would be something that, that the, the West could deal with. Hamas say they have already started to change. They point to their actions on Gaza's border with Israel as evidence of this, claiming now to concentrate solely on defensive operations. But the reality is rockets are still hitting Israel, 
not fired by Hamas fighters, but by other Palestinian factions. Prime Minister Haniya has no qualms defending his government's endorsement of such actions. All factions have the right to resist. However, what is the best way to resist? How can we do it? That's what we are continuously looking into. Therefore, we are talking to our brothers in Islamic Jihad. I think Hamas allowing rockets to be fired into Israel um, reflects two things. It reflects the the fact that um, the international community has shunned Hamas and that, that then Hamas has really no incentive to stop those rockets because it, it doesn't see any, any uh, um, horizon for reward for, for, for such action. Um, but also, you know, it has a support base um, that sees those kind of acts of, of uh, resistance against Israel as legitimate. Israel's response to the rocket attacks is to bomb the launch sites. And as in any conflict, it's the civilians on both sides who get caught in the crossfire. Israel claims the retaliations are precise and target militants. But in this case, two young boys were killed instantly and a girl severely injured. In the past, this kind of Israeli response to a Palestinian attack would have led to calls for revenge, feeding the cycle of violence and empowering Hamas. Now, another emotion is rising in ordinary Palestinians. دولة إسرائيل دولة عظمى تمتلك من العتاد الحربي ما يحطم كل عواصم العالم بالتالي من الجرم إنه إحنا إن نتعامل مع دولة إسرائيل أو نرد عليها بصواريخ بدائية بهذه الطريقة. Power looks like a poison chalice for Hamas, shunned because of its Islamist politics and terror connections. Even winning democratic elections didn't lead the West to accept their legitimacy. It is overseeing a collapsed economy, and its inexperience in government is shown. Now, faced by internal dissent, it is turning its back on toleration and instead trying to rule Gaza with an iron fist. Finally, even its attempts at brokering peace have yet to engage the international community. After 20 years in existence, Hamas has arrived at a crossroads. If Hamas does not go back to resistance to regain its image and repetition as a guerrilla movement, I think their support will shrink dramatically. Hamas was supported because of its guerrilla operations against the Israeli because of their suicide bomber, not because of their skills as administrators or as a rulers or governors. The West and Israel needs to realize that in any conflict, you negotiate with your enemies, you don't negotiate with your friends. So whether, whether you like Hamas or not, it is a force that's there, it's a force that has to be engaged. If you want to follow up the issues raised in this programme, go to the Channel 4 Faith and Belief website at channel4.com slash belief.